Hi everyone, Diana here with your weekly messages and uh, predictions, psychic messages and predictions. And I want to thank you all for coming and thank you for coming back. And I thank you all also for the comments that you make below. I really appreciate them and I'm trying to get better about answering them. Uh, this week, we're like every week, we're going to get a way to stay happy, to stay in joy. It's from one of my books, 52 Ways, uh, one a week for a year of different processes. And the one I chose this week, or I should say the one I just opened to, is number week 40, 27, Mining the Body's Wisdom. And we'll get into that in a moment. Um, we'll also get a message from my spirit guide, Philip. And in this, each page has a different uh, message for you. And interesting enough, this week I already chose the message. And I will tell you the story of what happened. But first I just want to say this is for the week of June 9th to the 15th. I think it's the 23rd, maybe the 24th week of, of the year. And so it's, um, we're into mid-June already. Can you believe it? The time has been going so quickly. Normally, uh, for those of you who have not been here before, normally we get a message from Philip toward the end. I give you a little information and we kind of choose it just by flipping through, which is how we normally do. But this week is a little bit different because I have a story to tell you about how the message came to me today. Thursday night when I went to bed, like I usually do, I asked myself um, to be open to any information that Philip brought forth for the weekly messages and predictions. And I woke up and I all I could think about was climate change, or as one of you suggested, climate emergency. Yes, we are in a climate crisis, and we're going to talk more about that. But that's all I could think about. And I said, all right, come on, we, we've got to get the predictions. We've got to get the messages. And I had other things on the agenda for that day as well. So I put it aside. Friday was suddenly gone. I went to bed Friday night and gave myself the same suggestion. And when I woke up this morning, which is Saturday, I all I could think about again was climate change. And I, I said, Philip, I, I really need some help here. What is it you want us to say? Well, I sat down. I finally kind of gave up. We have to surrender sometimes. And so I surrendered and I sat down and I reached over to pick up this book. And as I did, my thumb just happened to open to this page. I wasn't trying to open. I wasn't trying to get a message. It's just the book fell open. And as I reached for it, my thumb opened to that page. And I said, well, I might as well read the message. And I started laughing because here's the message. The opposite of love is not hate, it is indifference. The opposite of life is not death, it is indifference. I'm going to read that again later. But first, I want to finish the story here and tell you what Philip said. So I started laughing and I said, okay, Philip, I got the message. We're really supposed to zero in on climate emergency. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I said, Philip, what is it you want to say? So I'm just going to read you, in Philip's words, what the message is, because these are important, strong words, and I want to make sure I get it right. The planet you call Earth has gone through ex extensions of difference. Excuse me. Let me start over. The planet you called Earth has gone through the extinction of different species before. Extinction. The planet Earth will right herself. If this requires eliminating a destructive species, she will do so. Of course, eliminating a species from the planet does not mean the human consciousness is eliminated, as it does not require a human body to continue. The body allows consciousness to create in the human form. This human creation is also often, this human creation is often destructive as well as constructive. In your world today, overpopulation and non-productive choices <clears throat> excuse me, have led to the need for the planet to correct the misdeed. 
then I said, thank you, Philip. Philip thanks me. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I went on to ask if there were any other messages or anything else we needed to add. And he said, add a list of actions. So visualize the world healed. Clean oceans, flowers blooming, growing forests, pure air. Circle the planet with light. That's one. Visualize the world healed. Two. Write political leaders to hold them and the U.S. responsible. And I want to say thank you to all the young people around the world who are leading in many ways this recognition of climate problems, of, of client emergencies. And thank you. And this may be led by the young people. That's not to say those of us who are older should not get involved. Remember, love is the opposite of indifference. Indifference is the opposite of love. Three, write articles for publication. Four, stay informed with truth and in avoid conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories add nothing to the world. They just add anger and fear. Speak out, but not in anger. Number six, march in love for the planet, not against something, but for something. Seven, take responsibility, and this is a big one. Take responsibility for what you are doing in your life to add to or to help eliminate that which adds to the Earth's well-being. What are we doing individually? That's important. And eight, keep being love. Anger and fear feed the planet, as does love. Be aware what you are feeding her. Earth is a living, breathing organism that responds to human consciousness and actions. Feed her well. So we thank Philip for that information, and we need to listen to it. It is of utmost importance. And I repeat, the message that was given to me by Philip this morning, and is on the right page, by the way. The opposite of love is not hate. It is indifference. The opposite of life is not death. It is indifference. Oh, my friends, we can no longer afford to be indifferent. Not about climate change. Not if we want to leave a world for those who come after us. Let's let go of the indifference and move it into love. That's the most important thing that we can do. The winds are going to increase. The rains are going to increase worldwide. The U.S. right now is in peril, and we need the world to help us for those of us who want to see the right things done. Excuse me. For those of us who want to see the right things done, we need your help around the world with these eight responses or these eight actions that I just read you, read to you, or anything that you can do to counteract the current U.S. administration that says climate change is fake news or a hoax and unfortunately doing too many things to harm the climate. We need your help. I told you I would give you one more opportunity for joy this week. And this is about listening to our bodies. You know, we hold anger in our bodies. We hold fear. You, you really think, I don't care if you're left or right. If, if you're caught in the anger, if you're caught in the fear, you're doing damage to your body as well as your psyche. Uh, it's the same if, if we're caught in grief when we've lost a loved one or a beloved pet. Grief is going to be normal to go through, but we can't live there because if we live there, we're not helping them. We're not doing anything for them or the world, and certainly we're hurting ourselves. So what I want you to do is I want you to just begin walking. Walking is, is a really good way to change the energy of the body. 
but as you walk, instead of mumbling and grumbling about what's wrong in the world, start chanting or just if the word you use is love, but I'd like you also to really thank your body for its health, thank your body for its vitality, thank your body for being the, the, the support that it is. And, and as you walk, add love to your body, add love to the world. Let go of that anger, let go of that which is not helping you or anyone. Let's all work for what is right, not against what is wrong. Am I making sense? Work for the solution and work for what is right. I love you, my friends. I thank you for being with me today. Please be safe out there and use your intuition. It will help you. Until we meet again. Daisy's fine, by the way. She just happens to be outside playing. But until we meet again, we love you. Thank you for receiving that love. And thank you for loving us.